Hello everyone, what's up? Prince 15 here with another video review. Today we're taking a look at Transformers Studio Series Wheeljack from the Bumblebee movie. But before we take a look at the toy, let's go ahead and take a look at the box. So here is Wheeljack's box. Here he is right up front. He is Wheeljack and he's certainly looking like Wheeljack. Um, you know, you can tell that because his name is Wheeljack. He's an Autobot. He's from Studio Series. He is the 81st figure in the Studio Series line. He's for ages 8 and up. Of course, that's just a suggestion. Have to put that on there. He's manufactured by Hasbro and Takara Tomei. See, look, he's from Transformers Bumblebee, the Bumblebee movie. You know, that first five minutes that everyone loves. Transformers, you know, it's, it's from Generations. Then here's a better look at his face on the side. Not the most horrifying Bumblebee movie face we've ever seen, which is nice. He is a deluxe class in several different languages on the side. He's an authentic Transformer, no Chinese knockoffs here. So another good look at his robot mode, a very, very good looking robot mode. And then on the back, we've got all the things that he does. He's big screen inspired. Several movies from the Cybertron fall scenes. Here's his robot and vehicle modes. He transforms in 31 steps. There's his little bio right there talking about escaping Cybertron. Uh, you know, backdrop included. Don't eat the figure because plastic is not good for the human digestive system. And that's pretty much it for the box. So here we have Wheeljack himself in his vehicle mode. And it's a very good Cybertronian vehicle mode if... I is if I I mean minus it, it's a teensy bit gappy right there and that's just the elbows or or whatever the joints but honestly not bad in terms of making him look like a Cybertronian version of whatever his original G1 alt mode is this really 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 does a good job it looks like you know a futuristic a futuristic you know version of whatever that car was from the 1980s and not the great big old you know. <laughs> I Cybertronian minivan or whatever he originally was in in the in the first episode of More Than Meets the Eye Part One. So so yeah, no, I really really dig this design. This is a very very cool vehicle mode. This is arguably the best vehicle mode out of all the Cybertronian vehicle modes we've received from these Bumblebee movie figures. And so yeah, overall, I just really like it. Lots of nice color. There's some good you know some good uh, transparent plastic there in blue. The Autobot symbol on my copy has a little weird blemish on it. I don't know if that got rubbed off by me or if it was always that way. Uh, I didn't notice it. I, I didn't notice it when he was in the box. Um, if, the, if it was like that, but it's, it's you know that's just a, that, I, that's not even a nitpick. That's just a, oh interesting. It's it's not like the whole thing is completely completely you know rubbed off or something like that. So it's just like oh there's a little blemish of paint there. Hmm, unfortunate, but not a huge deal. So overall the paint yeah it looks. Pretty good on him. Love the little details here. This 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 really gives me War for Cybertron vibes, as in the 2010 video game. This really does give me a lot of those vibes. I mean, I could I could see it's like you know third person mode, like you're driving along going, bzzz, bzzz, and then kind of ties in here is that you can take his weapon and just so there's your little storage right there, and then you know you can have him going along and shooting at things so yeah it's a it's a it's a pretty good vehicle mode and then speaking of that you know 1980s car he used to transform into here is uh earthrise wheeljack i think he's from earthrise originally i got him in the war for cybertron walmart exclusive Netflix series box that was all white and was you know like had the Netflix logo on it and everything so I can't remember what I'm pretty pretty sure that he's from Earthrise so there's the so there's the Earthrise wheel jack in terms of vehicle modes he's definitely uh he's definitely a beefy boy compared to uh his Cybertronian version here but uh but you can definitely see the the similarities especially when I uh do this hold on there we go Yay, now they both have weapons. <laughs> so, so yeah, there are some similarities there, obviously, because this inspired that. So, pretty cool to see. And then uh, we'll go ahead and also bring in Bumblebee because, you know, it's uh, it's his movie. So, there we have the Beetle, the Beetle Bee, alongside Cybertronian car. And, yeah. So that's pretty much going to be it for the 
for the vehicle mode. Now we'll go ahead and get into transformation. So first we'll, you know, remove the weapon. That's going to help a lot. And uh, th this transformation is really, really interesting. This is the kind of engineering I love to see from Studio Series because when I think about this, and I'm like, how do they work this magic here? And nothing makes sense, but then you start working on it and then everything's just kind of intuitive. And it's like, oh yeah, that, that's right. That's how this works. And it, it, it does kind of feel like magic. So first what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of work on getting his arms untabbed here. I think that's what I want to start with. Actually, I think this, you know, I've, <laughs> it's actually been a minute. I've actually forgotten which piece to loosen first. That's, uh, that doesn't happen to me very often where I, f I forget which piece should go first. Let's start with the front instead because there is this little tab here. And I know by, yeah, here we go. Now that, yeah, we're starting to get some movement going. So go ahead and flip up. These will flip up and then we can bring all this down and yeah this is going to get things moving a little more than trying to mess with the back so i just kind of went for the arms as the first thing because they were more visible to me so so yeah so that will all split down the middle like so and then we can kind of start if you go underneath you do kind of see a little bit how things are going to work and so we'll want to get these untabbed He's untabbed. So now we've got things. Things are a little loose. They're a little. They're moving a little bit. And now that we've got all of that done, now we can move over here to the arms on the back and kind of get them moved out of the way. That's yeah. No, <laughs> there we go. See that that all works much easier when I you know do things in the order that they're kind of supposed to go and just not trying to rip things apart. So here's Wheeljack's head. So we'll just kind of go ahead and move this up and out of the way, get his head turned around correctly. And for right now, I'm going to go ahead and focus on the legs because the legs, I think, are a thing of beauty in the terms of how things work here. So here are his feet. They just flip down like so. And then you have these parts here that kind of go on the side of his legs so we'll bring these wheels back to kind of get them out of the way and then we can take these and this one likes to get a little stuck but it will if it wants to cooperate with me there we go see now it's, now it's getting loose you can see what's going on here there we are so kind of Get that all loosened up, turned around like that, and then we can just squeeze it back in to kind of sit in place. And then this, there we are. Now it's detached. And now this will move down like so this okay before we let's put the, push this back up because and there it goes that's what i was trying to avoid because what we have here is a double hinge and i've dropped it again okay so get this attached back on and we want this to because it's as you can see it flips around there but then there's this hinge, it rests on here. So we want this to come all the way around before we move this down. So now we can move this down and kind of get it into place here. And then this will just tab into there like that. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Now that it just, you just do need to make sure that you're kind of doing things in order here and not, uh, and not forcing anything but uh, when you when you do it correctly it does kind of all work out brilliantly and I, I really like that so we'll do the same thing over here we'll make sure that this gets come on turn the way I want you to it will it will click come on 
Okay, it's it's over there. We'll focus on the rest of that later. So now, same thing with this knee piece. This one's much easier to move than, than the other leg. So we'll just bring that down and just push it in. And then now this piece will swing down and we can connect it like so. And then there we have the legs all done. So now we can swing this around and we can get really moving on the arms here. So we'll just go ahead and because so this is the chest. So this just gets folded up like that. And then we've got we got a lot of double hinges here. So we got a double hinge in here and we just want this to fold up like so. And then that will just tab into there. So you can kind of see where that's going, but in order to really get it tabbed in, we kind of need it in place completely, and we don't quite want that yet. So now we'll focus on the arms. And if they want to move, here we are. There we go. Yeah, once you get them separated, then everything pretty much moves the way you want them to. These just flip out. Come on, I said you move the way I want you to. <laughs> He's not really, okay, here we go. That works, that works. He's not really cooperating with me today for some reason. All right, now we've done that, we can get the chest clicked in here. Come on, the chest clicked in here. There we are. Just have to get it up in a specific place. And then we'll go ahead and lower this piece here. And it does kind of it is a little stubborn so it can kind of feel like you have to force it a little bit but then that will just slot in there and then these will just if you can see those tabs there if it wants to focus we'll just tab into either side of arms and then that will complete that and then we can take these and point them up Fix his head. Then these kind of just stay exactly where they are. Yeah, and then yeah, we pretty much have wheel jack all done. And we'll go ahead and take a close or look at his face, which is very, very nicely detailed. The amount of paint on here. And the eyes, and it's like all, all of that is just really, really well done. I think they did a magnificent, magnificent job on his head sculpt. That just all looks really good. And overall, the robot mode itself just looks fantastic. I just, I mean, other than the, you know, these pads being on the back of his hands, which really aren't the biggest deal. I mean, this is just a, it's just a really, really good looking robot mode. It's clean. It's like the fact that, yeah, he does transform what he tra into what he transforms into. And you really can't tell. Like, there's no car, with the exception of this, which is pretty obvious by the, what's on the box. Um, you know, the character model. I mean, this is maybe the best Cybertronian Autobot we've gotten from the Bumblebee movie. And I think they've all been pretty fantastic. So, so yeah, Wheeljack is very, very good. So we'll go ahead and give him his blaster. Now on my cut now on my copy at least the joints are a little stiff. So like I've popped his arm out of socket. Come on. Go back in. Cooperate. I'm praising you. Cooperate. <laughs> there. So yeah. So there he is holding his blaster, ready to fight off the Decepticons, even though there's too many of them. <laughs> so so yeah, there is Wheeljack. For a size comparison, we'll bring in Earthrise or whatever the heck 
line wheel jack that he's from here. So you can see the G1 inspiration and the, you know, the kind of modernized G1 look here. So cool to see the side by side here. And then we'll go ahead and bring in Bumblebee from Rise of the Beast, since, you know, it is uh, his movie here. And he did look like this, or close enough to it at the end of, at the end of this movie. So, there he is. There, and also, it's like, if you, <laughs> it's like, can, even though he looks totally different, Wheeljack is, of course, also in Rise of the Beast. So, you know, here's two characters that were in Rise of the Beast together. And speaking of characters that were in Rise of the Beast together, here we have Optimus from, you know, again, this movie. So, there's how they look together. And of course, we gotta bring the whole squad in now. So, here's Ratchet. Here's Ironhide. Hold your gun straight, soldier. Here's RC. And here's Braun. So, with the exception of B obviously being from Rise of the Beasts um, and not in his Cybertronian mode, I th and uh, it's like, well, I'm for, I'm I don't have Cliff Jumper. Mine is Cliff Jumper. So, but uh, you know, close enough because Bumblebee. But uh, you know, this is pretty much all of the Cybertronian Autobots we got from uh, the Bumblebee movie. So it's pretty much the, with the exception of with B here standing in for B one twenty seven. Uh, that's, yeah, it's pretty much the whole collection there. So uh, pretty cool to see all the... And technically speaking, I guess this, he's not in his Cybertronian mode considering he transforms into an Earth truck. But, you know, close enough. We're counting close enough. And then just as an added bonus, here in the back we have Starscream. So, yeah, no, I think it is really, really cool. It's got it. Love Bumblebee. It's a great movie. Uh, but you really do have to give that you know, beginning like five minutes credit, uh, especially since, you know, it was added in at the last minute that that one quick scene over the several years has netted us all of these toys here. It's, it's really, it's really quite fat and really quite fascinating and interesting. And, uh, and the fact that they all turned out really brilliantly, like it, like each of these is, well, I mean, except with these two, but you know, they're supposed to be the same, but you know, it's like each of these is unique and has their own things going on. And, uh, and, you know, it's, like, looks really great and transforms really great. And it's, like, these are just bang up, you know, outstanding toys all, all around. It's, like, these, it's, like, th this is, like, you know, kind of the, the golden example. You know, all of this is, the, like, the golden example of what Studio Series can pull off. So, very, very, very pleased with, uh, with the whole lineup here. And, you know, of course, Wheeljack included, so... So there is Wheeljack all by his lonesome once again. But of course, we're not quite done because every Studio Series box does come with an added display. I'm going to give you three guesses what Wheeljack's display is, considering what scene from the movie he's in. Oh, what a surprise! It's Cybertron. So we'll just get him. posed up a little bit here and place him on his display and yeah there we have wheeljack uh so i struggled a little bit with the transformation of actually getting him transformed <laughs> and that's just you know my own ineptitude but uh, the transformation is actually really great when i actually go in the order that it's supposed to go it is a really smart clever oh wow yeah this thing moving here does move it move this out of the way for this and and blah 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 blah, and all, and and, it's, and we get a very distinctive robot and uh, in vehicle mode where it's like you know there's very little kibble on him. There's not a giant backpack. I this I mean this is just like a gold standard of what a transformer can be. I I, I feel like it's like this is just an outstanding fi figure all around. There's a good amount of paint on it. I don't really have any paint complaints with this guy. I think his paint is as good as it can get. Honestly, I mean, it's, it looks accurate to the film. I mean, overall, this is just an outstanding figure. Um, and, you know, he's been out for a little while, so, you so you know, you may have run, run out of your chances to get him. But uh, if you still haven't snagged yourself a Wheeljack and you like 
the Autobots at the beginning of that, uh, in, in that Cybertron Falls sequence. Um, do yourself a favor, get a Wheeljack. This is a really, really good toy. So my one complaint, I suppose, since I haven't really talked about any negatives, my one complaint, and it's not even really a complaint with him specifically, is the fact that, and I don't know why they did this, is that each of these blasters is a new mold to fit the size of the particular figure. It's like none, none of them are the same. Even the 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 closest we get to having weapons being the same is between Ratchet and Ironhide since they are, you know, the same mold with different colors. But even then, Ratchet's blaster is gunmetal gray while Ironhide's is black. So even then, it's not there is no one repeat weapon and I kind of wanted a bunch of the same blasters so then I could have like characters dual wield them and the, and it would you know be identical blasters to dual wield but they're all different <laughs> so but that's I can't really hold that against this figure or any of the others because that's just honestly that is that is honestly Hasbro going above and beyond what they really were required to do in terms of you know making sure all the blasters fit each character and they didn't look oversized because like imagine giving imagine giving a large a way larger blaster to like Braun who's really tiny. It would look a little silly. Now it may it might would have fit, but it would look a little silly. So but but selfishly I did kind of want just a whole bunch of the same so I could have like characters dual wield with the exact same blaster, but they're all different sizes and slightly different shapes even though they're all based on the same design. So uh so little itty bitty nitpick for the Cybertronian Autobots overall, but that doesn't really affect the standing of how great Wheeljack is. So yeah, Wheeljack's great. Do yourself a favor, pick up a Wheeljack. He's he's really good, especially since you might be able to find him easier than uh, when Pablo comes out in uh, 2024. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this review. So uh, thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, all the great stuff. Remember to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Those links are in the description below. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.